This podcast is brought to you by Pod Show and GoDaddy. This show will give you a special code to get great discounts at GoDaddy.com. Got something to say? Blog it with your free quick blog from GoDaddy. MadPod.com, show 175. Don't get mad, get media. MadPod. Rare celebrity interviews. Indie music, madpod.com. Your global audio internet connection. Coming up on madpod.com. Hey everybody, Jay Dolly with you. And on today's show, we have an interview with the Outlaws. You remember the Outlaws, right? Our, our buddy Shadow Steel has an interview with those guys. And uh, don't forget about the Earthlink Challenge. That's right, you can do your own commercial. Make big money and prizes, and here's one of my spots. We're doing the Earthlink Blues. That's right, baby. Earthlink. Bombastic broadband. Delicious dialogue. That's Earthlink. Earthlink comes home to you and brings it home to mama. That's right, sister. That's what I'm talking about. And Earthlink will help you out with all your internet needs. So just go to earthlink.com. Let them know that Papa sent you. Yeah, that's right, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. That's what I'm talking about, sister. So go to uh, adchallenge.podshow.com and check that out. You can come up with your own spot, your own ad, and tell the world how great Earthlink is, and you have the chance to win big prizes. At least that's what they uh, tell me. Anyway, all right. Uh, today's interview here's Shadow Steel and the Outlaws, MadPod.com. Originally formed in Tampa and joining us live coast to coast from Brookville, Florida, singer, songwriter, guitarist, and founding member of the legendary rock and roll group The Outlaws, Huey Thomason joins us. Welcome, Huey. A pleasure, sir. Hey, it's nice to be here, Shadow. How are you, man? I'm good, sir. How are you doing down there in the Sunshine State? I am stellar, if I do say so myself. Now, Huey, the Outlaws on tour, appearing at the Ribzilla Barbecue Festival there in Tampa, the Orange County Choppers Festival in Tempe, Arizona, in Maumee, Ohio at the Miller Lite Pizza Challenge, Guilford, New Hampshire's Meadowbrook Musical Arts Festival, and the Cripple Creek Roadhouse, New London, Connecticut. Another fine summer of road trips, Huey. Absolutely. We're looking forward to playing every one of those, and uh, hopefully we'll add some more to it. We can't wait to get out on the road and play some more. Huey, give us a little background on the group. Firstly, in the original lineup, how did you, vocalist Henry Paul, the late guitarist Billy Jones, the late bassist Frank O'Keefe, and drummer Monty Yoho get together on Florida's West Coast during late spring 1972? Well, it was a combination of things, actually, Shadow, that happened. Billy and Monty were playing in a band together. Uh, Henry was playing in a separate band. And the Outlaws had actually been together before then, starting in 1968. Uh, with myself and David Dix and Frank Gidry and Phil Humberg and a few other people. And, um, and then that band went through some changes and, and we ended up, uh, adding new members and stuff and, until we got the guys we wanted to play. And that's when Billy and, and Henry and Monty and Frank came in. Uh, you know, that ended up uh, being the right combination of people, uh, to write songs and to, and to record. It seemed to work really well. So that's how it kind of happened. Kind of all came from different bands and played together, actually, on the same shows in our different bands, and then ended up playing together. So uh, it, was a, it, was, it was not like overnight, you know. It took time, uh, I, I'd say over a period of a couple of years, for us to form that group of people and keep that group of people together long enough to write songs and then be ready to record a record. Now, Huey, we must mention Jones died on February 7th, 1985, and less than three weeks later, bassist Frank O'Keefe passed on February 26th, 1985, at age 44. What a loss to the music world, Huey. Oh, that is the truth, and I miss both of them dearly. I'm sure everyone does. They were great talents, and they were great human beings. I mean, I was proud to know them as friends and to play in a band with them. So we do songs in, in this show that, uh, that Billy wrote and Frank wrote. So they, uh, they, they were a big part of the sound of the Outlaws, but we don't forget where we come from. 
Now, I realize this is standard operating procedure for rock and roll, Huey, but by 1981, Freddie Salem, Rick Kua, and David Dix had replaced Paul, O'Keefe, and Yoho. Why the many personnel changes, Huey? Uh, everybody had their own reasons. Some people had enough of the road and didn't want to play. Other people were just unhappy and didn't want to be here. So if you didn't want to be in the band and you weren't happy playing here, then, you know, there's the door is how we felt about it. And so we went through some changes. And uh, if you look back over the years, the Outlaws have gone through changes. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the only one that's been there since the beginning and hasn't left for any reason. Uh, so uh, I guess that makes me Mr. Outlaw. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just one of those things. You know, you got to find the right bunch of guys that want to play together and the style of music that you're playing. And uh, I was lucky with Rick Kula, Freddie Salem. Uh, I mean, they're both great players, uh, incredible players. It's always nice speaking with the head outlaw, Huey. <laughs> well, I've been called a lot of things, you know, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> Now, here's an interesting trivia note. The Outlaws was the first rock and roll group signed to Arista by Clive Davis. Just a bit of musical history. That was a novel move for Clive Huey, especially after recruiting vocalists such as Tony Orlando and Barry Manilow from their previous Bell Records days. And uh, Melissa Manchester, I believe, too, along with about that time. Uh, we were, like, really blessed. Clive took a liking to us and signed us. And the record company got behind us and just gave us this big old shove and got us out to where everybody could hear our music. Uh, started playing it on the radio for us, and the next thing you know, we're touring the country. And, uh, I mean, it all starts with your, with your record company, you know, and if they, if they believe in you and they like what you do and uh, you guys get along, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Flyers hooked us up with some of the best producers in the business. I got to record a record with Matt Lang, with Ron Nevison, with Paul Rothschild, who did Doors and Janis Joplin. Uh, I mean, just uh, Bill Semzik, who produced the Eagles. We were so blessed in so many ways with, uh, with Clive's decision to do that. Now, Huey, your first Billboard Smash 45 RPM single was There Goes Another Love Song, taken from your self-entitled Arista debut LP, peaking at number 34 on the Top 40 Labor Day weekend. That was September 6, 1975. Huey, how did the concept of a 30-year anniversary tour for the Outlaws get started? Um, well, it was just, uh, it really didn't, we really didn't think of it to be a, a reunion tour until we realized it was 30 years. Uh, but I had been playing with Skinner for not, about nine years, and, uh, I decided it was time I wanted to play outlaw music again. I, I, you know, felt the need to sing, and I love playing with Skinner. Those are great guys. They're my family, my friends. I still talk to them, and, uh, and, and wish them well, always. And, uh, we may end up playing together someday. You never know. Uh, I hope so. Uh, but anyway, uh, I felt like it was time for me to uh, to get back to what I'd been doing my whole life. Uh, when I joined Skinner, um, I was only supposed to be there for about six weeks and ended up staying the amount of time that I did, which was great. I had a great time, wrote a lot of songs with those guys, did a lot of videos. But like I said before, I was, uh, I was wanting to get back to, to singing more and writing more and, and doing more outlaw-type songs. Uh, I just felt that urge. It, Sometimes you hear it calling, you know, they, I hear it call my name, you know. So uh, there's little voices going, you know, you need to do something else. And since I couldn't do both uh, because of the schedule, I had to make a decision. So um, we had a talk and everything was fine and reformed the outlaws and then realized it was the 30th year. I went, oh, well, then we'll call it the 30th year anniversary tour. And that's what it was. Uh, we had a great time. We had people come and play in the band that aren't here now. But that's why they call it an anniversary. And you know what? I was thinking, Shannon, why shouldn't we have another anniversary tour that's made a couple of the other members of the band that, uh, that weren't in this lineup? Absolutely. It's interesting. I found that it wasn't something you'd been contemplating for a while. You just decided to do it one day. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I, 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 I just decided I wanted to play more and sing more. And I missed the uh, three-part harmonies and some of the guitar work we used to do and stuff. Um, I did have my hands full with Skinner. Playing with that band was a chore, I could tell you. They're a great bunch of guys. But uh, playing outlaw guitar is a totally different thing. Yeah. Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pod.
live coast to coast from Brookville, Florida, with singer, songwriter, guitarist, and founding member of the legendary rock group The Outlaws, Huey Thomason joins us. Huey, Hurry Sundown from the 1977 album of the same name peaked at number 60 pop September 30th. Huey, when you first started out in Tampa, were you aware of Skinner, Blackfoot, 38 Special, Hatchet, and everything that was happening with the big southern rock movement in Jacksonville? Uh, we were aware of it, yeah. We actually played in Jacksonville, and that's uh, I actually uh, met the Skinner guys back in probably 70, 71, I believe. Uh, we played a place called uh, Mothers up there, I believe it was. And uh, we opened the show for them. And uh, it might have been 72. I'm not really sure about the year. But uh, we opened the show for them, and uh, and Ronnie came in and looked at me and said, Who are you? And I said, Huey Thomas. I go, Who are you? And he goes, Ronnie Van Zant. And we shook hands, and it uh, started from there. So we ended up actually playing together and jamming uh, with them. Uh, and subsequently, later on, after a, a release of our record, we ended up doing quite a few tours with them. So we go way back. You know? Did you feel you were part of all that, or were you guys just doing kind of your own thing on Florida's West Coast? Well, we felt like we were, we were doing some things that the other bands weren't uh, with, with the harmonies and a lot of the, the double guitar work. Um, I know everybody was doing double guitar work, but when I say I'm talking Billy Jones style harmonies, which is something that's special, um, we didn't uh, really consider ourselves a southern rock band, but everybody else did. And I've always said, well, I really don't care what you call us as long as you like it. It's all right with me. So we can be a rock band, we can be a southern band, we can be a, a rockabilly, I don't care. As long as you like the music and you're having a good time, it really doesn't matter. Shout out. Those are truly words to live by, Huey. Now, your old comrade Henry Paul joined the country trio Blackhawk by 1993. Huey, were their musical roots similar to the Outlaws? Oh, I'm sure he carried some of that with him, absolutely. Uh, I hear it in the harmony structures, uh, some of the arrangements, I mean, mostly in the harmonies, because that's one thing the Outlaws did quite a bit of. Um, and like I said, working with Eagles producer Bill Simzik, you sing harmonies. Working with Mutt Lang, you sing harmonies. So, I mean, uh, I think he took that with him for sure. And that's a good thing. You always need to carry something with you, you know, something good. Huey, in all honesty, were you surprised at all when Southern Rock exploded the way it did into its own kind of unique musical genre? It, well, I tell you what, it exceeded any of my expectations by light years. Uh, and I can't believe that it's still going on today. I mean, it really is. Uh, I see second generation, in some cases third generations, uh, of families coming to see see us play. Uh, I mean, sometimes there's there's kids in the audience, 12 years old, 16 years old. Sometimes I see five, six year olds with their parents. They bring them to see us. So I think it's a great thing, man. Their parents are bringing them to see live the music that they grew up listening to before they had their kids. So that says a lot about the music. Huey, how would you describe a typical day on the road with the Outlaws? Do you practice a lot, or are you pretty much ready to rock and roll? Well, we, we do a rehearsal before we, we tour each time. We have a, a number of days we spend getting ready, depending on how long we've been off. And we always do sound checks every day, and we're always singing and playing on the bus. So once, once we get together, it's just a matter of time before somebody picks up a guitar and we're working on something or writing something or working on harmonies or guitar parts. So we pretty much constantly uh, live, breathe, and sleep the music when we're together. Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pod. Live coast to coast from Brookville, Florida with singer, songwriter, guitarist, and founding member of the legendary rock group The Outlaws, Huey Thomason joins us. Huey, the 1949 Vaughn Monroe hit Ghost Riders in the Sky took on an entirely new life when resurrected Christmas week 1980 from the album Ghost Riders, reaching number 31 and spending 15 straight weeks in the top 40, complete with electronic cattle prods for sound effects and more. Huey, whose idea was it to rework that post-war crooner class Actually, it was my idea, but the way it came about was kind of odd. I could I could tell you a short story. Well, we were in the studio with Ron Nevison, and we had been out in California at the record plant, uh, which is no longer there, by the way, but was a great studio. And uh, we had been there for a number of weeks working on our, our record, and Ron came to us and said, we need to talk one day, and so we sat down and, and had a little meeting, and he goes, well, guys, you know, we, we got a great record here, we got a lot of great songs, but uh, we don't have these songs. And uh, we all kind of looked at each other and looked at Ron and said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you got a great record, but you don't have the song. I'm telling you. 
And so one of our crew, I mean, they actually kind of got mad about it and made some wise, wise crap. Well, why don't you cut witch doctor or something like that, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and when they said that, the first thing is I thought to myself, 